When companies ask for a budget, can we ask what their budget is? I don't want to say too low. Absolutely. You can absolutely do that. And sometimes they will be like, sure, we'll talk about what we're looking for for this. And you can say, here's what I can deliver within these rates. Some of them will dig their heels into the ground and they won't do it. At that point, you have to decide what do you want to do. So you should absolutely have a standard. You should have a baseline. So within your influencer life, you should have a minimum amount that you're charging. So if you charge something for a TikTok, like the bare minimum, it starts at $100, or it starts at $300, or it starts at $1,000, whatever it is, and it won't go below that. Now you can think about the brand that you are going to be working with that has reached out to you, and you can kind of pitch around that. Another really great thing is um, a gal who used to work at TikTok has created a glass door app called Clara. It's C-A-L-A, -A, oh no, I didn't even spell that right. C-L-A-R-A, -A. there we go. <laughs> it's like elementary spelling bees over here. Um, and oh, influencers can go over there and without saying their name, they can say TikTok paid me this much and Snapchat paid me this much and, um, and a magazine paid me this much and a, a movie paid me this much. And so you can kind of get an idea of what other people are getting paid based on their audience size and engagement, and all of those things. So that gives you a decent baseline. Now, another thing is if you work with like influencer apps, these companies will come to you and their contract will be a hard and fast thing. So I work with some of the social media apps. They pay me to create content for their apps. If you look at my content, you'll see hashtag partner or hashtag ad. And if you are seeing things like that, it means that company is paying me to create that content. And so um, they are hard and fast contracts. It's not something that I get to make up. So if they say, well, you're going to get paid $500 or $700 or $2,000 to do X amount of content through X amount of time, like a couple of weeks or a couple of months, I can't negotiate that. It's take it or leave it. So you have to understand that there will be certain campaigns that are non-negotiable. This is what they're doing. And if influencers fit in, cool. And if an influencer doesn't, goodbye. If they're coming to you directly just a one-on-one -on -one campaign then there's room for negotiation so there's you know the difference between those two things and you really have to figure out where your standing ground is is it going to be with your time and effort is it going to do well with your community is it going to be something that you want to work in an ongoing capacity with this company in the future it's okay to say no now and say yes later on to a different project or to follow up with them later on for other things you just have to understand that you have a minimum amount and you have to keep that baseline for yourself so it's okay to say no. and It's okay to walk away. Remember, I turn down 90% or more of the offers that come to me. I get daily offers from companies to have me represent their different products. And it's sometimes a really good fit, but they don't want to pay me enough. And it's sometimes not the greatest fit and they want to pay me a lot, but it's not a great fit. And I will turn them down because I'm protecting my community and my brand and my business. It's always better to say no to things that are not absolutely perfect. Thank you for the dancing flowers. That was fun. <laughs> Y'all, okay. <laughs> um, but it's okay to say no. It's okay to turn things down in order to leave room for better things. Remember, turning things down does mean turning down money sometimes, and that can hurt. I understand that. I know that that can hurt. But by turning something down, you now have the room and the space to bring in something that's going to be a better fit for your audience. And remember, if you're making things that are better fits for your audience, your audience is going to respect you more. If I just took in any project and let's say one of the things that recently was pitched to me was a remote control helicopter that has nothing to do with any of my audiences, not at all. But if I had taken that on and I had said, hey guys, remote control helicopter, my audience would have looked at me like I was crazy. And then the next time that I represented something to them, they would question what I was doing. But if I took on something that was absolutely perfect, like what I took on today, I, am, I did the first commercial for that major TV network, and it is the best, the best fit for one of my audiences. It is so good that I could not say no to it because I know, even if it's not my favorite thing, I know my audience will resonate with it so deeply. And so I took it on for a little bit less than I ordinarily would have because I knew it would be so well with my audience. And because I'm going to represent this to them and they're going to watch this movie... The next time I represent something to them, they're going to be extra tuned into me because I already gave them something that they love as a recommendation. So it's okay to say no.
It's okay to move things over to the side to leave room for the better things.